Hi everyone, welcome. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're going to have a great time today. We're doing a couple different compositions that we're, we're just going to have fun. This is the Extreme Beginner Series where you're just starting out. It's absolutely awesome. This is the most fun time you're going to have with your watercolors because you're just starting out, so you're just having a fun time. You don't care. You're not worried about your techniques and all your you know, your art supplies and all that kind of stuff. You just, you realize you just, you grab yourself a, a simple paint set, you know, with the five and dime online, you know, five, ten dollars you spend, you get some brushes and some paints. You probably have pens and pencils around the house. You use those to do your drawing. You just have to buy a little bit of uh, watercolor paper maybe for these type of exercises. Other than that, you're set and you're ready to go. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to do two beautiful compositions. One, the first one is a tree and we're gonna have a little hill and a tree let's zoom in a little bit there we go and you're gonna have a lot of fun doing this this is really a simple composition you're gonna learn how to um, add some leaves to your tree once you get your trunk in and your branches so that you leave lots of um, airspace in there so the birds can fly through they're flying around and they need a little spot to fly through and that's uh, how we think of it. Always remember, you want to leave some space in your leaves on your tree. It makes it look much more beautiful. And a little bird we have here sitting on one of the smaller trees to the side over here. And some weeds and grasses and things and a couple splashes and a gorgeous blue sky wash, which we do right in the beginning. So this is the glazing technique here. So if you can imagine, we're going to think about watercolors most times as two different techniques. The glazing technique and the a la prima technique. The second painting we're going to do is the a la prima technique. This is the glazing technique. A first light wash of beautiful blue uh, sky wash right into the foreground here in the hillside. And then we go over with our darker washes for our second glazing or our second wash after that first wash 100% dries. And that's all we have to remember. When you're doing the glazing technique, you have to let that first light wash dry 100%. Then you go over with your darker washes to fill in your subject matter. Um, and you're all set. You'll have a fun time. It'll be much easier than trying to suffer through painting over the top of wet paper. Because as soon as you do that, everything will go wrong. So, great thing to know. The glazing technique, as long as you do it the correct way, you're all set. And then we have our second painting. This is a really fun painting too, and this is an extreme beginner's painting as well as the first one. Not really difficult. We went over how we're going to draw this and then paint this a la prima style, which means we draw it first with our pencil, and then after that we just paint everything at one time, basically. We did let some areas dry, and you'll see that in the video, but for the most part you can see that this is a really fun painting to do. You can uh, do a larger version of this painting once you do it a few times with smaller compositions. You can do this in a larger format. And basically we just kind of showed how with Magic Marker, this is what we did. We did the bench, the wood, um, timbers of the bench across two, basically, these are two squares if you can see that, right? The bodies are basically two squares like this. Then we add a little bit of a roundness to them. And then another circle on top and circle on top. And then a hat on both figures. You can you can leave the hats out and just make them round for the for the heads. You can leave the heads just round without any uh, hats on there, but hats look a little more interesting, I think. So you do it the way you want to do it, but that's basically the simplicity of this composition. And it's a figure it's a you know figure painting. You can do this even as a beginner. I got, I'm breaking it down into simple. The bench is, is, that's all it is, the park bench with the timbers going across. You have the two supports for the bench there, and then you have two squares fused together, and then the heads on the top. And then we have our beautiful bird here that we, we added in, which looks fantastic and makes a much more for much more of an interesting painting with a bird along the side here um, joining the two figures as they're sitting in the park. So I hope you'll enjoy this video. It's a lot of fun. Just try it. Maybe do this two, three times each of these compositions two, three times and um, you'll 
each time you do it, you're going to learn something new. You'll get a little better at each one as you go. And if you do them 10 times, each one 10 times, by the 10th time, you'll have learned three, four, five or six different things that are going to go much better for you as you keep progressing in your watercolor painting. Okay, so everybody, we'll get back here in just a second once we... Okay, so we're going to... We'll be right back. We'll do these paintings. We'll do this one first, and then we'll do this one second. And again, have a great time with this. Enjoy. And uh, I'm going to cover all the steps that you need, all the techniques, all the colors, everything you need to do these both will be in this video. So you don't have to worry. You can just follow right along. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. All right. We're back and we're in business here. We're actually uh, getting started. You saw all the finished paintings we did in this video uh, in the very uh, start of the video. So this way you can kind of uh, review what the paintings are in this uh, uh, video and this way you can uh, pick and choose which ones you'd like to work on. Uh, these are going to be fun. Uh, it's always good I think if, especially when you're um, beginning out, uh, beginning in watercolor if you can paint in smaller uh, sizes it's kind of good because it focuses your energy and your your mind into a smaller space which is easier to control whereas if you had a large sheet of paper and you're trying to work on a large sheet of paper it's going to be a little difficult at first but i would definitely say once you get a good hang of doing some smaller uh, compositions like this after a while maybe a year <clears throat> maybe a year you can start getting larger sheets of paper and i'm not saying this is the the definite size you have to use for smaller type uh, compositions but this is kind of like a nice I feel this is a good size here this is like a four by six let me see here uh, let me get my ruler and check on this approximately a four by six yeah four by six I would say yeah four by uh, five and a half four by six so a four by six is a really good size to do some uh, compositions on a consistent basis every week uh, when you have time maybe you, can, you have more time to paint maybe you have less time but you're you're probably really gonna have a, a better success if you're working in smaller sections like this and you'll get the feel of the watercolor medium probably a little easier too and again but don't shy away from doing larger if you want to if you want to do larger sheets of paper you know you just uh, you just have to use bigger brushes and you have to um, you know work a little faster because when you're putting down a larger wash it starts to dry and then you're you know here you have more of a focused area where you can kind of keep an eye on everything once you get a larger sheet of paper going it's a little more difficult so let's get started here uh, first one painting we're going to do here is we're going to do, do like a simple tree uh, with some uh, brush and some bushes and some twigs and some grass and things like that so let's So we're doing just a little bit you can see here. Now, um, if I, okay, what I'm going to do is a preliminary sketch first, and then I'm going to go over it with a darker sketch. So what I'm doing, basically, it's probably hard to see with my lighting, the really, really super light sketch I'm doing. But essentially, you just want to do a super light sketch to get everything where you want it on your, your paper. So here I'm getting in my bushes over here. And then I'm going to do maybe a, uh, I'm going to do a nice a tree over here, and I'm going to have it lean this way, the tree, and it's going to go like this and that. It'll almost reach the top of the paper. That's one thing I want to keep a kind of a. So you'll see that I'm just going to do some of the branches. I'll do probably most of the branches with my brush. But I just want to get the overall where the branches are going to be, where the trunk of the tree is. Um, and this is some very light indications of some of the um, leaves on top. Just like that. Okay, so that's about it. Now I'm going to go over darker now with my pencil line just to show you what I did. So super light sketch first. You can kind of see it a little bit on camera. Now I'll go over with my darker drawing, just so you can see the basic um, lines of what I'm doing. So this is an interesting kind of a vignette. So we have 
and then we're going to do our tree shape here. There's the tree trunk, some of the twigs going up. I'm not doing all of them with my pencil. I'm going to do some of them with my brush so we don't have to get too involved with painting every branch and twig. We'll do that with the uh, brush in a few minutes. Okay, so that's basically a simple um, rendition of a, a tree here along a little embankment with um, some, we're going to have some, I'm going to do just a couple weeds like that and, and a couple twigs and some interesting, like that. And then we'll have a little bit of clouds up here. So we'll just remember to add some clouds over here. <clears throat> and we'll make the clouds kind of like in the same angle as the, the tree. So the tree's kind of leaning like this. And so we just kind of make the clouds kind of in that same angle versus maybe going straight across. We'll kind of make the clouds on an angle, the cloud shapes and, and sky washes. And we'll, you'll see as we go along here how we're going to develop this. And again, it's just a small composition. And um, maybe we're going to have another, another couple of... Uh, And I think that's good. Okay, so now we're going to get started with the painting. But before I do that, I, I just wanted to mention too quickly, if you haven't subscribed and you like this channel and you like coming here and learning about um, the extreme beginners watercolor techniques and methods as we go, please hit that subscribe button. It's right on the right-hand side there. Um, also, there's a notification bell. You can click on the notification bell. This way you'll know exactly when our videos come out every week and you'll be alerted to it and maybe you want to watch it one time if you maybe just have some downtime and you want to watch it quick through for, uh, for one time and then maybe the next day or two when you sit down and you're going to do your drawing and your painting you'll already have a little bit of a, a head start because you've already seen it one time your mind's absorbed the painting and the compositions we're doing and then when you sit down the next time to do it and work along with the video then you'll be a little bit ahead of the game and you'll already be familiar with it and then it'll be a little bit easier for you to uh, do the painting and the compositions that we're working on. So I hope that makes sense and uh, again if you're subscribing you won't miss anything and uh, we're going to be back in just a second. I'm just going to take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start painting this uh, first composition. All right so we uh, just took a break good to take breaks some you know once in a while if you don't need breaks or you think you can go maybe a little longer without a break that's fine but try to remember that taking breaks is a good idea it kind of helps you just to relax a little bit and get um, uh, you can focus your concentration a little more um, when you come back from a break you know you have better concentration um, you know sometimes it's a it's an, an advantage because you can let some of your um, watercolor dry your painting your your uh, water washes your watercolor washes dry and that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break in another couple minutes because we're going to get our first wash on this painting and this is going to be a again a glazing technique painting so we're going to do a glaze uh, a light wash first over this entire um, composition painting and then we'll come back once it dries and we'll start doing our finer details. Alright so now the first thing we're going to do is let's get some sky colors. We're going to do a nice looking sky here. Let's get the blue and maybe a touch of brown. So we're going to do some brown too to maybe just give ourselves a little bit of a variation on the blue and um, maybe a little bit of purple too. So if you can kind of, if you can get like maybe three, three, let's see, three kind of washes here in the, in the, in our paint in our palette so we have blue and usually it dries a lot lighter when you put it on the paper so make sure you, you have enough uh, color in there enough paint so you can kind of see the consistency of this and then up here we have a little bit of that brown mixture just to give us a little bit of a grayish blue and then here's some purple and that's just, and with a little bit of this too, just to gray down the purple a little bit. There we go. Perfect. That's all we need. Now, now's the fun part. First, we're going to just, um, and as I always say, I have clean, fresh, clean water. You always have to empty your water bucket constantly, maybe two, three times during your painting process. 
you're going to be emptying this water container that you use and putting in fresh water and it doesn't have to be a lot all you need is maybe an inch of water on the bottom of your water pail and you can use plastic I use these all the time mostly the uh, collapsible uh, Holbein um, water buckets they're made by Holbein they're, they're great they're light you can squ squish them down and take them with you if you're going to go out and to the park and do a little painting or in the backyard or wherever you like to paint uh, outdoors and um, so again fresh clean water just a little bit one inch keep an extra bucket or if you have a sink close by you can pour your uh, muddy water into the sink and then you add some more fresh water and I like to also I use a, a fan brush here like an old fan brush I have and usually what I do is when I'm done painting and the water gets muddy and murky then I just take my brush and kind of swish it around very carefully on the bottom to get up all the sediment so that when I do dump this I have a bucket in my studio next to the my art table here I'll take that and I'll dump the muddy water in after I've stirred up the bottom just to make sure I get all the um, sediment, uh, the paint sediments off the bottom of my bucket, off my uh, paint, um, my painting uh, container here. And then I pour fresh water in, maybe an inch on the bottom, and it's ready to go. So we have that. And we're going to start again here. And again, we're going to take fresh, clean water. So you always know I'm going into my water bucket next to me. I don't have to really show that. It's taking up too much real estate on my camera frame here. So this is the tissue. You rinse your brush off. When you're doing details in the darker washes, you'll be using tissue to take some water off, or you can use a sponge next to your water pail. I have a sponge here, and where is it? There it is. So I have a sponge sometimes next to my water pail. I just trim this down. It was like a larger uh, kitchen sponge. I just cut it into small pieces with a scissors um, when it was uh, moist and damp so it's easier to trim. And then I put this next to the water bucket and I can tap my brush on the sponge next to my water bucket and then I come over here and get the paints. Now if you're doing a sky wash like this, now we're not even going to use a sponge or tissue. We're just going to wet our brush, fresh clean water, and just make a little bit of some wet um, wash, some clean fresh water, not everywhere, but here and there on the sky, and then maybe a little bit on the ground area too, not everywhere, here and there, just a couple spots. It gives a nice uh, alternation of drier paper and wetter paper when you put your wash on. So that's all I'm doing here is adding intermittent bits of clean fresh water onto my paper down here by the weeds over here too by the embankment over here where there's some grass and things and weeds and then in the sky now watch how fun this is once you go in and grab your sky wash and you just go across it adds all that interesting happenings look at that you don't have to watercolor paints itself actually a great artist once said that 60% of watercolor, the paint and the water does the work. So that's all we're doing here is we're letting the paint and the water do the work. Look, I don't have to do anything. I just go like this, touch the paper with some of the paint colors and just let it do its thing. The least amount of overwork you want to do. And that's how we do it. And look at that. And then we go in here, we'll get some purple too, put some purple in the sky. And you can maybe make a decision you want quite a bit of it like that not as much things broken up into smaller bits and pieces you want something more flowing and uh, uniform so there we go a little bit of white spots here and there for the sky you could take a tissue even too and add a cloud or two just gently touch like that and then over here in the ground level, ground area, a little bit of the purple and the blue and the grayish brown, like that. A little bit on the hillside over here too. This way, everything has got that blue, purplish, gray um, wash across the whole painting. Then we add some more brown, maybe a little orange and brown, and. 
and uh, orange and orange and brown with maybe a little touch of blue like this and we're gonna add some of that ground color look at that how easy that is okay now remember this is the first wash so you're not doing all the details now you're just getting that first preliminary wash in like we're doing here and that's all we do and then at this point at this point we let it dry so again we're going to take another break and let this dry we have to let this dry it says we didn't put a ton of water on here on this on the paper a ton of wash and a ton of water but we did put a good amount on here so this should take about a half an hour to dry where you can go back in and start working on this after about a half an hour to an hour if you want to use a blow dryer be my guest I'm gonna use a blow dryer myself once I uh, take a break now I'll blow dry this and we'll come right back and we'll start working on the finer details of this and it'll be a beautiful composition completed and then we'll work on our next one right after that okay all right we'll be right back Okay, so we are back and we are working here on our composition. We have a beautiful tree, some uh, a hill, uh, an embankment, a hill here, beautiful uh, outdoor scene with a tree, uh, some beautiful blue sky. You can see here this is pretty much dry now. It's dry to the touch. I can touch the paper, nothing's happening. It's pretty much like 90% dry. That's fine. Now what we're going to do is um, let's take some paper towel I usually take my paper towels and I you know tear them in half so I have a, some paper towel here and then I just go in dampen it with the water that I have in my bucket and I just lift up all the paint that we've used because we, we want to start with dark paint so we're going to use straight paint out of the palette here and we don't want to have too much um, puddles of paint in our palette that'll ruin the wash that we're going to do on top of this light wash so remember when you're going to go to do your second glazing or your second wash in the glazing technique we're working in the glazing technique and many of you I know you're my extreme beginner students I know you're going to look at my other videos and watch them too and see what's going on over there um, and there you'll always hear me talking about and squawking about uh, a la prima and glazing technique the two main techniques in watercolor that I feel are the two main techniques pretty much here we're using the glazing technique for first wash is a super light wash of color and water you get you set the tone of the paper the colors and you cover the whole sheet of paper for the most part and then when you come in with your second glazing you're going to be using straight paint pretty much not much water to do your darker uh, areas of your paint and your darker subject matter so that's what we're doing here and um, I think we're ready to start doing our we'll do our tree uh, here and some branches and twigs and some of the leaves and things and we'll be pretty good and some grasses and things in the foreground here so we'll, we'll start out here straight paint no water um, let's add some blue to our brown. So we're going to use the same colors we used for the first wash, the first glazing. And then we're just going to add in a little bit of green. So we'll take some green here, just a little bit of the green into that. And uh, some purple too. So we're getting a good grayish color with some greens in there and I think that looks pretty good maybe some orange I think that should be good and then we roll our brush around to get a nice point on it you can see that I roll my brush around like this and there we got the nice point point. and then we're just gonna do very carefully our trunk of our tree and you can see that we didn't use any water just straight paint from our palette and we remembered that we spritzed our palette when we first started. We spritzed our palette when we first started our painting session here so that it's got a little bit of moisture on the paint so that we can use use the paints and that they're not dry. But again, these are, we always talk about this for extreme beginners, you don't have to go out and spend a hundred or two hundred dollars on paints. You can buy the Prang Oval 16 
palette, semi-moist watercolors, and you get great results with this. And it's simple, you just, it's a brand new set, it comes with a brush, it gives you the colors uh, in the palette. When you buy the palette, you'll see that it gives you the, it, it explains what each of the colors are, orange, red, violet, green, and so forth. You'll memorize the colors after a while. The only thing I did when I did differently is I take this palette and you can pull all these colors out, no problem. You just you pull the individual pans out like so, and you can rearrange your rearrange your colors. And I did rearrange them warm to cool. So everything here is red, red, orange, orange, red, orange, orange, yellow, warm colors over here, and then they start to go into the cooler greens cooler blues, purple, and then black and white here. So you can just see that I rearranged it when I got it home. Once I ordered this online, I just took each of these all out and just rearranged the colors so that I, and I always keep it the same. I never change this order. This way I don't have to even think about it. I know right where I'm going all the time with my brush. That saves on time. You don't have to think about where your brush is going. Does that make sense? That really helps you a lot if you keep your palette the same colors and you keep them in the same order. Eventually it's like driving a car, you're not thinking about where the shift is or where the signals are or where your button to up, go up and down with your windows or anything like that. It's all, you just don't even think about it because it's all a second nature to you. It's already memorized in your brain and in your mind. And this way you can be handling all the other stuff like watching traffic and different things like that as you're driving or maybe you don't drive. Same thing maybe when you're uh, eating dinner or having a meal, you're not thinking about how you're holding your fork and your spoon and how you're holding your cup when you're drinking. It's all automatic, autopilot. So that's how it is with painting. You want to make things easy. Don't um, make it harder for yourself. Make it easy. Keep your paints in the same order all the time. And you can have different palettes. I have different palettes. And they can be different as far as where the paints are, but if I've worked with that palette a number of times and I memorize it, it's okay. I, I kind of know where everything is. And I want you to do the same thing so things are easy for you. You don't have to worry. All right, I'm doing my darker branches here, the thicker branches. As you can see, those are the thicker branches. And then we're gonna even get a better brush. We're gonna do some fine um, branches and twigs and things with a better brush we have. You'll eventually get one of those too. You'll save up a little money. Maybe you have a birthday coming up and someone will give you a birthday gift. And you'll have a nice new brush. All right, so I did some dark, thicker branches there. Good. And now we're going to do this. We're going to use our uh, Alvaro Castaneda needlepoint brush. This is like the best brush I've found for anything, landscape paintings, flower paintings. You can use this brush in all of your paintings. It's got a super fine point on it, which gives you incredible detail. And that's the key you want. You wouldn't be able to get the details we're going to do now with this brush because it's it's got a good point on it, but not like this. This has got a super fine point, and that's what we need here. And we're going to just get a little more. And now for the super fine details, we're going to need some more darker darks. And let's get our blues and purples here. A little bit of green. So we're going to mix up the same colors. I think that's good. And then we're just going to take our needlepoint brush. And you'll see here, I'm going to rest my hand on the paper and just hold it and just do some quick pick up some more paint and look at that these are such fine you could never do this with another brush other than this kind of brush here the needlepoint brush so I encourage everybody, when you can, you want to pick one of these up. You don't have to get it right away. Maybe you have to wait six months or a year to save up for it. Whatever it is, that's okay. I'm always saving for art supplies, too. 
and then we'll do some of these look at this and that's all we need right there perfect now we'll go back to our other round brush that we 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 this came in our set here, so we, this one was when we purchased our Prang Oval 16 semi-moist watercolor set. And this came with the set, perfect brush. Now we're going to get some more green here, um, some more purple and blue, an orange. You can see I'm just mixing up that darker mix of um, all the, the same colors, blue, a little bit of purple and blue, green and brown, and that's all. Now we're going to take our brush and we're going to scrub. Now this way, for this part where we're going to do the leaves on this um, tree, you're going to want to hold your brush like this. You don't want to hold it like a pencil anymore. So we've been holding the brush so far. Everyone, you're probably like me, you're holding your brush traditionally like you would hold a pencil, and that's how I hold my brush most of the time. But here's when you have to change up a little bit to get the good effects of your, your branches and trees. You have to hold your brush like this now, like this, versus like a pencil. You have to switch it up and hold it like this, and then you want to gently scrub on the paper and you want to scrub to the right like this. And just in a couple spots, not everywhere. Practice this a little bit, have fun with it, don't get stressed if it doesn't come out right the first time. Then once you get that on, the first few first few goes of it, then we go in like this. And then you can add in with your regular technique of just resting your arm, your hand onto your paper, your pad of paper, at your table, or in your lap, however you're working. And then you can add in some other. But the key for this, the most important thing out of all of it is <clears throat> do not fill in all of the br branches with leaves. Leave lots, can you see how that looks? Lots of airspace in there. For the birds to fly through, yes. That's why we leave those holes. You gotta leave plenty of holes for the birds so they can fly right through there. Sometimes they don't wanna go around. They just wanna keep going straight and they just go whoop, right straight through there. So do that. Remember, do not paint that whole thing in. That whole tree shape, your leaves and all that. Leave, leave some spots for the birds to fly through. And we're even gonna have a fun time here. We're gonna actually, we're gonna make we're going to make a bird on top of our tree, which I think is going to be fun. So let's go back to our needlepoint brush. So again, we're going to go back with our needlepoint brush because now we're going to do a bird on the top here of the tree, and we want to be care. We want to be careful with it. Let's see. Wait a minute. Before we do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of. There we go. A little bit of some leaves on this in there too. Okay. <clears throat> That's good. Now, okay, up here we're going to do a bird. What did I do? I went to my cell phone, looked up uh, birds, pictures of birds, and there we go. So then all I do is I've looked up pictures of birds on my uh, cell phone, and I'm going to set it right on my table over here. And I'm just going to copy one of them, the one that I think would look the best in the tree here. And I see my favorite one I like, and that one is up here. And then the thing too, when we make a bird in this picture, which I think is really going to look great, uh, you could put it up top here. Maybe you want to put it, maybe we'll put it down here. Maybe the bird is kind of like over here. He's kind of, kind of sitting over here on this area of the painting, maybe on this little bit of trees and, and uh, this smaller tree over here. And so I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to copy the shape. Okay, so it's like this. It's like a um, 
So my bird friend here is um, sitting on the branch up here. And then like that. And I just take my time carefully. So we have the head of the of the bird here and his wings over here. And he's on the branches over here. And I think that's fine. That really looks good. Um, and I'm being careful to try to copy what I'm seeing. He's a big bird there. But they're light. Even though they're big, they're light. And the branches are still holding up fine. Like that. See, now we have a little added interest in our composition here, which I think is really fun. Okay, so you can do that if you feel courageous. If you don't want to try out the bird and put that into your painting, don't worry, but it's really quite simple. And again, the uh, the shape will, let's see if I can find some paper here. Give me one second. Just use some printer paper here. So when I copied the when I copied the bird shape, you know, I just got the we're just doing a like a hypothetical if you're gonna do it. You know, you just get the basic shape first. It's comes to a point here, his wings and his tail section, like that. Like this. And then the head area of the bird there. And you can practice a whole bunch of these on some printer paper. That's what I have here, printer paper. But so you could try this a few times before you do it on your painting. And then when you go in to do it on your painting, it comes out so much better because you've, <clears throat> excuse me, you've already tried it a few times on some practice paper. That's all. <clears throat> that works with any t type of subject matter you're painting. If you, certain things are kind of more easy, sky washes, those are a little more simple. <clears throat> but then once you get into like some other things like maybe figures or birds or animals or dogs or cats or whatever you like to paint, if it's something a little bit more uh, difficult or intricate like that, you try it on some practice paper first, get the feel for it, and then you tr and then you put it into your painting, and that's all. And it'll, it'll go 100% better. So we're almost finished here on this composition. We'll get started with our next one in just a few seconds. Let's let's just get a few more little uh, bits of grasses and things. And then here I'm going to do what I like most often is pick up some paint, dry it off on some tissue, so my brush is a little bit drier. And then we do this. See? And that looks a little better. And this is kind of a very subtle kind of painting. I don't have a lot of colors bursting everywhere. It's kind of subtle. You can see it's mostly grays and blues. and So you can add a little more color like I'm doing now. You can add a little couple splashes down here like that. That always looks good. Splashes up here in the tree area. And, you know, some more color over here with some of the orange, orange and then the grayish colors that we already had, that we had mixed up there in the pan. Okay, so that is about it. So I hope you'll have a great time with this composition. You know, if you have a couple bad brush strokes there, blot them up with a tissue. Not a problem. And again, a couple more splashes. There we go. We've had a wonderful time on this composition. We're going to start with our next painting just in a second. But let's let's lift, and you'll see the, the value of taping your paintings. Okay, I had some tearing issues here. My paper is a little inexpensive paper, so it's going to tear more easily. And I think this tape is a little too harsh. It's got too much tack to it, as they say. So the best thing to do when you're tearing your tape is 
make sure you're kind of keeping it on a 45 like that. Very carefully hold your paper down and try not to let it tear up the paper on the other side there. Might be able to do this and get away with it. Let's try it up here. I don't want to tear up the sky. All right, so we got away with three sides going okay, but I was too fast on the first side over here and not that careful, and you saw it happen. I tore up uh, some of this area, but, but that's all right. It's a composition, and always remember, be very careful when you um, tape your paintings, your compositions, and if you're using these types of tape you get at the big box stores, like the Home Depots and Lowe's and all those type of big stores, these are painter's tapes that professional painters use. They're made for putting on uh, painted walls so that it doesn't tear the paper and paint off of walls that they're working on in people's homes. So this is better tape to use. This will not tear your paper up, this green and purple. I think they're made by 3M or also frog tape. Yes, this is frog tape, the green, and this purple is scotch, or no, 3M. So different companies make it, but you'll find them in the hardware stores, the big box stores. Painter's tape for fine moldings and trims. <clears throat> Any of the people at the store in the paint department will help you find this. They'll know what you're talking about when you ask them about these purple and green tapes. Okay, so let's take a quick break and we'll get started with our next composition. Everybody, thanks for coming by again. And um, we're having fun here as always. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. And uh, it's exciting. Watercolor is a great medium. You're going to love it. And you just keep working on these compositions like this, and you'll get the feel for the medium, and you'll be off and running like there's no tomorrow. Okay, so let's come back. We'll get started on our next video, our next composition. All right, we're back, and we're starting our second composition, everybody. We're going to enjoy ourselves here and do a little figure painting work. And even though we're working in the, the Extreme Beginners series here, there's no reason why you're not going to be able to do some figure work, some figure painting here. This is just going to be a way to build up your um, repertoire of some of the paintings you're going to be doing. You might work on this painting a number of times. You might do it in different um, color schemes. You might do a large version of this. You might do a smaller version like we're doing here on this composition. If you do the same painting over and over, but in just in different ways, like, you know, maybe a larger sheet of paper, a smaller sheet of paper, some different colors, you know, mix it up. After you do it five or six or seven times, then you're actually way ahead of the game because you've practiced a s simple uh, composition over and over again. And if you can do something over and over again, you'll get better each time you do it. You'll make a new um, a new insight will come into your mind and you'll say, oh, I remember on the last time I did that composition, I, I did this not that great. Now I know what I have to do on the next one. And that's all it is, is just perfecting as you go each step of the way. So this painting, I'm just going to do, um, you know, kind of like this is just, uh, I'm going to do this composition from memory of a picture I used to, I painted a few times. So it's like a park bench type of style. So I think I'm going to start it here. And this will be the park bench. So this is the, uh, the bench like this. That's all. So we have the bench like so. And uh, we could do this. Um, I think we would have this. So we'll make our first. We'll make our first. wood bench timber over here and then over here so you see I'm just cut this is gonna be the bench of the of the park bench and I'm just coloring in with my pencil a little bit shading it in so I know when I go to paint that I'm gonna use these as the dark uh, part of the bench here these where I'm shaded in a little bit you'll never see the pencil lines once we start doing the painting and then we're gonna do two figures next to each other and we're going to do this. Let's start it out. 
okay basically you're just doing a rectangle here and a rectangle here with a little bit of a slope by the shoulders but basically you have two rectangles that's two people and then this one here this is the female figure she has uh, a scarf on it's, it's winter time it's kind of cool and it goes over this way and uh, so they are on the bench here and they're sitting and okay and then this figure here has a jacket on with a collar this female figure has a hat on so uh, we could make the hat or if you I would say yeah the hat is not too difficult it's an oval like that so you make an oval again if you need to if you need to you practice some ovals like this so you practice some ovals like that and then when you go in to draw this hat you're drawing an oval and then the top like so and over here this gentleman here where he's wearing a cap too he's wearing a a ball cap maybe like that like so and his figure goes down like this on the bench like so and there you have it how simple is that now what we're going to do is we're going to make this a painting where we're painting into the light so the lights coming this way the sunlight is coming this way so we're just going to see the silhouette of their um, their bodies and so we can leave our colors we mixed before we can leave those same colors in we're just gonna do maybe the same colors again let's do some brown some blue some orange some purple a little bit of green I think that's good we, we have this will be the a la prima method. We're going to paint this all at one time. And you can see how I'm going to do this. I'm doing the slats of the bench like this. Look at that, how easy that is. So you just you paint your bench uh, timbers that go across like this. straight across all you do is you take your brush load it up with the paint you've mixed set your brush down on your paper and then hold your hand on the paper or the pad of paper and just slide gently across and you have your your wood um, timber for your bench there so that we have our figures and then we'll add a little more to this later and then again we're just using those same colors and we're gonna it's gonna be a silhouette so we're using the we're gonna fuse everything together you can see how I'm doing this right I'm just painting this all at one time There we go. Everything, one time, a la prima method. We're painting everything at one time. And you can go over these lines with the benches because we're gonna go over with a darker wash on top of these benches, the uh, timbers on these benches here.
once we're done. But we want to get the main silhouette done. If that makes sense, does that uh, make sense here? We're, we're trying to get the main silhouette of this picture completed. And then we're going to go over with more details a little bit later. But you can see how I've gotten everything two people. They're on a bench here. They're chatting. Beautiful winter day. Bundled up. It's a little chilly out. Okay, we're going to take a break, everybody. Perfect time for a break, but you can kind of see that this is... Once you have your park uh, bench timbers in, then you're just doing basically again, we'll, we'll draw it out quickly so we kind of get a, an idea of how this, so you'll see. Um, let's see, what do I have here? Do I have a magic marker? Yes, I do. I have a couple magic markers here. Okay, so again, um, the park benches, the boards for the bench, the uh, like that, and then we did a rectangle here, and then another rectangle right next to it, so the two figures. So like one rectangle here, one rectangle here, and then we put the scarf there, and then the head on top of that, and then a hat. You don't have to put the hat though, you could just do a round head, and the same here. There's a bit of a hat here, like that. And then we just filled in both areas with paint, like that. So you can kind of see that, right? So you have the two figures next to each other keep them both fused together like that so there's no airspace in between them or uh, you know you won't want to be seeing any light through the we want to have them sort of they're uh, leaning against each other and there there's no space between them and that's basically the painting and then we're going to go over with some darker paint just to maybe add a couple details and then we'll be all good on this one but this is a fun one to try. Try it over and over again until you get it where you really are happy with it. So it might take you four or five tries. No big deal. You're doing it in small compositions like this, like a four by six, four by seven, four inch by seven inch uh, format. You tape it each time. Just this way you frame everything out really well. And this way if it comes out really good when you're peeling up your tape very carefully, you'll have a finished painting. Okay, so let's take a quick break. We'll come back and um, we'll do some darker uh, washes on this, but for the most part, um, this is pretty good. We'll, again, we'll just do a couple little touch-ups here and then we should be good. And uh, oh, I always mention too, if you haven't uh, subscribed, please consider it down there on the right-hand side. There's the subscribe button. This way you don't miss a thing. We do everything watercolors here. We're doing figure paintings, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We're doing small compositions. We do tutorials on paints and palettes, brushes, you name it. We do everything here, watercolor. So keep coming back, and especially you're in the Extreme Beginner series, you can co you can go actually back into my archives on my uh, channel. You'll find 10 videos on paints, 10 videos on palettes, 10 videos on brushes, 10 videos on any subject matter you can think of, 10, 20, 30 videos on boats. 10 or 20 videos on landscapes, seascapes, figure painting, you name it. So we have tons of other videos. You can go back and look into my previous uh, videos that I've created on YouTube over the last five years, or you can just stick with us each new week as, a, as we work on new paintings. We're doing everything new, fresh as we go. So maybe that's, you just rather follow along on the new stuff. That's great too. It's all good. Enjoy yourselves. We're going to finish up this painting in just a second, and that'll be uh, it for this uh, video, and we're going to come back and do another one next week, okay? So we'll be back in just a few minutes, finishing up this painting with some details, okay? All right, we'll be right back. 
All right, everybody, we are back again. We're finishing up this painting. We had a wonderful time doing this uh, painting. This is some beautiful figure painting to uh, a couple together uh, chatting on the bench here in a park. Beautiful silhouette. Um, this is, uh, we're painting into the light. So, you know, we try to make it a habit here. Usually um, I'm always uh, squawking about putting your light insignia. So up here is your light. So if you pretend this is your spotlight up here, this is your spotlight here. That's your sunlight or your spotlight. And we're painting into the light. So that's the light shining in our faces, basically. And that will always keep you uh, on target with um, where your light source is, because that's important. Like if you have some shadows in your painting, you'll always want to know where the light is in your painting. Where it, so if you put an insignia like this in your painting, whenever you're starting out your sketch, whether you're lights coming from this side of the painting or if it's coming from this side of the painting you want to be aware of that all the time just something to keep in mind you might want to make a note of that but it doesn't you don't have to worry about it actually because you're going to see me do this all the time on my video so you'll just learn it you know just be something that you'll eventually have committed to memory because you're watching it over and over again and that's why our videos are so great here you're going to see the same thing over and over and you'll learn it just by default because you're doing it all the time so Let's do some darker washes here. So I'm gonna, since we're doing darker washes, we're going to take our same colors we used before. Blue, purple, brown, touch of green, touch of orange, purple, blue. We're going to want it to be sort of dark here. We're doing a darker wash. So, let's do that. Now, we're just going to do a couple. I'm going to do some, just a little bit of darker wash along this. Doesn't have to be the whole, just parts of the fence. The, um, I should say the uh, bench. These are timbers, wood timbers on the bench. I want to just get those a little darker. What that does is that makes the figures look like they're further in front of the bench, the uh, park bench here. So if you make these wood timbers a little darker after it's dried, you will notice that it will sort of set the figures a little bit forward of the bench here. And we're also going to do a little bit of uh, some, we'll, we'll do some uh, details on the bench even beyond what we're doing right now. So we're just going to, sometimes you'll need to spruce up your paints with a little spritz of water. Not too much though, just enough to And then I'll make sure I go right along that tape line. Does that make sense? I'm just going over the tidbits of information that are going to help. Like if you're doing this for a, maybe you're going to make a um, occasional card or like a holiday card or a birthday card, something to that effect. You know, you would make sure you're painting up to the tape really well. Like that. And... I'm going to do a little bit of more darker. So I'll rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water. And if we add just a little bit of details like this with a little bit of a darker wash, does not have to be a lot. Just a couple things here and there, a couple little spots of wash where we're making things a little darker. It's going to look a little more detailed and more interesting.
And if you see a little bit of detail, you know, you can also add that in. Blue, purple. Again, we're using the same colors. Orange, blue, purple, blue, brown, touch of green. If you see some details, roll around your brush to get a good point on it there. You know, if you see a couple details here with the, um, maybe the scarf has some some details on it, you might do a few of those things like that. That can add some interesting, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of shadow under there. We might add just a little bit with a tiny bit of Sometimes we can add a little bit of, um, I'll do some glasses here. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. We'll zoom in in a few minutes. But sometimes you can add in a little bit of detail just to make things a, a little bit interesting. Um, we're going to add in the... Uh, This is some of the uh, the metal that holds the uh, wood together for the bench. So we'll put that in. And why not? Let's do... Let's do a bird over here again. We have to practice them first. <laughs> so please practice them first. And... Uh, And this very lovely and fun bird is just hanging out with everybody here. You know, it's the park and the birds too, they like to be out enjoying the sunny day in the park in the winter time. So if you add this little bird to the to this scene, it really makes it more interesting, doesn't it? And so we'll put the bird over here. And he's just enjoying The bird is enjoying the day too, and this couple here is having a fun time there. And I think you'll have a fun time doing this type of painting. It really, and again, if you need to add some more details, dry off your brush and just use straight paint. Don't use any water. That's all you have to do when you roll your brush around to get a really good point, or you can use the needle point brush too we use. So here I'm just kind of doing the glasses for this gentleman here. And we did an eyelash and a little bit of the nose on this figure's head here. And for you extreme beginners out there, trust me, this is a painting. You don't have to do these fine details if you don't want to, but I don't think they're that difficult. And let's zoom in just so you can kind of see. What we'll do is we'll zoom into this once we, um, at the beginning of the video. So. At the beginning of the video, you're going to see more of the details on this. I'm going to cover that. So that we're kind of going over the fine nuances of what we're doing here. So the last thing we'll do here is we'll... We'll remove the tape, and again, carefully when we remove our tape, we'll remember to hold our paper down and then try to do it on like that 45 degree angle. Can you see that? How I'm just going real slow like this? Go real slow with your tape when you're removing it. Unless you know your tape is not going to tear your paper, then you don't have to spend that extra time. But here I'm not sure about this tape. It's a little bit harsh. Sometimes this tape I have here. So that's why I'm going slow. I don't want to tear my paper. And there we go, we have some 
just trying again. Go slowly, hold my paper down. Keep that tape on a 45 degree angle as you go. Hold your paper down so it doesn't move. And as you go along, and there we have it. Okay. All right, we'll go over the, uh, we'll zoom in on the beginning of the video on these paintings just so you can kind of see more of the close up details. And um, I thank you so much for coming by and painting with us. We've had a lot of fun on this video. And uh, again, try these a couple times, two, three, four times, maybe some different color schemes. Um, but you're going to have a wonderful time. You can do figures even if you're just an extreme beginner. You're just starting out. That's fine. We all were at that point where we just started out with watercolor. So there's nothing to be, uh, you know, worried about. You're just going to have to keep working as you go. A little bit at a time, you're going to get better and better. Each time you pick up your pencil or your paintbrush, you'll get better. The more hours you put in, the quicker you go. If you're only painting or drawing once a week, you're not going to progress as quickly. But if you're putting in 10, 15 minutes of drawing every day, and then maybe painting on the weekends and drawing on the weekends, you're going to go a lot faster. You'll, you'll make a lot of progress with your drawing skills. So I always mention that. Please try to pick up your anything you have, piece of paper and a pencil, and draw something for 10 or 15 minutes. You're practicing every day 10, 15 minutes of drawing skills will go so far. So don't worry about it. Just grab it, pencil, pen, anything, piece of paper, printer paper, napkin, whatever you have laying around, and just draw something for five or 10 minutes. It'll help you to get better at drawing, and that's the key here. And if you don't want to draw, and you just really just can't seem to want to have that uh, time to be drawing, you're not really happy with drawing, well, then you can just paint. So instead of drawing anything, just take your paintbrush and your paints and start painting your your subject matter. Don't worry about drawing. Just maybe get everything down rendered with a brush. So instead of drawing, you're just going to go right in and start painting if you don't feel like drawing. Okay. All right, everybody. See you on the next video. And again, thanks so much for stopping by. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.